or a full moon. It is all happening. The only difference is that you already have the knowing because you see it. The way I'm looking at this now is that money isn't what we know as money. It's not green paper. It's not numbers that sit in your bank account. It's an energy that starts with a thought. That is what currency is. That is what money is. I'm making this discovery and it makes so much sense. It also sounds silly that I'm just barely discovering this, but you know, everything a su tiempo, todo a su tiempo. Everything has the perfect timing and for whatever reason, I was supposed to go through the lack mentality and be able to pull through it. I believe that now wholeheartedly and I believe it's because I am supposed to reflect a higher calling to you if you are also feeling limiting beliefs and trying to break through these beliefs. I do believe that the lack that we feel are programs that are ancestral, most especially if you're a person of color, if you've had to deal with struggles that aren't of believing, they aren't of dreaming, they aren't of setting goals, achieving those goals. We're coming from a completely different place and we are the first ones that are sort of breaking ground within our family. At least that's the way it feels like for me. So let me just go back and give you an update on the two exercises. I am loving the exercise where I'm reprogramming and creating new memories. I love the way it's working because I am attracting what I am actually picturing and it is like magic and even though I've applied this to other areas in my life for whatever reason I had this blind spot that I wasn't able to apply when it comes to the energy that later manifests in money. So let's go back to last week when I mentioned that I was having dreams and that my dreams almost felt prophetic like I was prophesizing something and I was receiving messages that I needed to take action from. One of the dreams I had was with Angie Sanchez. Remember Angie Sanchez? She is the incredible healer that facilitated my past life regression. In my dream, Angie and I had a mission to carry out. I didn't fully understand my mission, but Angie's mission was completely clear to her. She knew exactly the steps she needed to take. In the dream, she told me that consciousness had shifted last night. That's what she said in the dream. I'm quoting, consciousness made a major shift last night. It was our duty to head north. She had made a discovery of coals that were turning into this new and rare diamond. It was a really beautiful turquoise blue clear diamond and I remember seeing the lumps of coals she would pick up the lumps of coal and she would perform some sort of alchemy and as she would perform the alchemy you could kind of see the charcoal around the coal begin to fall and then this beautiful diamond emerged it wasn't in the shape of a traditional diamond like a princess cut or anything like that it was formed like a sphere a long skinny sphere and I remember being so mesmerized by this blue, shiny, crystal diamond. It was a, in the dream she called it a diamond. I keep referring to it as a crystal because it's so hard to believe a diamond so beautiful with the pigmentation of the color. It was just this beautiful turquoise blue. We were to perform this alchemy up north. My mission was still unfolding and that was a little hard on me because she already knew exactly what she had to do. I sort of had to walk in faith and step out and just believe that my next step of my mission would be shown to me. In my dream, Angie was much more advanced and I think I was, maybe I was feeling a little bit insecure. I was feeling some fear. I also had to leave my son and I had a really hard time leaving 
leaving my son, but I remember the mission being so important for the greater good of humanity that I had no choice but to leave. It wasn't even a question. It was like, I have to go. But it was also extremely hard to leave my son behind. I was only going to leave him for several days, but it was still hard for me. I woke up and the dream was so clear. And so I went on with my day. I began working and my intuition kept telling me, you need to tell Angie your dream. You need to tell Angie your dream. Finally, at around, I don't know, maybe five or six or something, I sent her a message and I told her my dream. She mentioned how so much for her has shifted in the last 24 hours. Now remember, in the dream, she had said that last night, consciousness shifted. And then she began to explain that she just started performing this blue flame meditation. And that if I felt that in any way the blue flame meditation had anything to do with the blue diamond. As soon as I read that, I freaked out because I just understood that we were really together in our dream. That our energy had really met the night before and that we were on to something, we were doing something. So I immediately asked what this blue flame meditation was, if she could share it with me, because in the dream, she shared the diamonds. She shared the process of transforming the diamonds, and it was a very important teaching that was integral to the shift of the consciousness that was shifting within the last 24 hours. It was part of the shift that was going to bring us to the next level and remove, I feel like, a lot of the chaos that we had been feeling. Angie read the second part of the message really late, and she said that she was going to go to bed, but that the following day, tomorrow, she would tell me about the blue flame meditation. So the next day, she listened to the podcast. She listened to last week's recording while she was working out. And she reaches back out and she said, I'm so glad that I waited and listened to your podcast because you are practically doing the blue flame meditation. You're just missing one piece. You're missing the blue flame. By this time I was freaking out because first of all, if you remember, the diamonds that I saw were like a sphere. They were like a long skinny sphere. It looked like a flame and they were in coal. So that means they had to be in heat in order for alchemy to transform it into something else. I knew that I needed to learn the teaching. In the meditation where I am drawing in the bright white light and I am flushing out everything that does not serve me in through my head and out through my feet. She is practicing the same thing, but she is pushing the white light all the way down through the earth, meeting the light at the core, finding the hottest center of the core, working with the fire in the core, identifying the blue flame. Once you find the blue flame that happens at the very tip of a fire, you know how when you see fire and the cooler it is to the top, the flame turns blue. Pick up that blue flame, bring it up through the earth, push it up into your feet, up through your body, through your head, through your crown chakra, and push it up into the heavens. I immediately started practicing this. I began practicing it with a set of exercises that my body felt called to perform while I was doing this meditation. I guess it's meditation in motion at the fullest because I'm being called to do a series of clapping while I perform this meditation. I know it sounds really crazy. For those on Patreon, I will be doing a video on how I do this meditation. I'm sure I look really crazy. My son's already gotten used to it, but it really helps me visualize and feel the energy pushing through me. So it's almost like a physical exercise as well as a mental exercise. And I've already began to see so much shift. And I began to see how all of the messages that I'm now prepared for and listening to when it comes to abundance are making their way to me. 
I went to a really great program on Saturday called Amapico. It's a program that Red Bull puts on. It is such an incredible program. I went to an introduction of the program last year. They announced that they were going to bring this program to the United States in 2017. I really wanted to be a part of it. There was another part of me that knew that I just wasn't ready. They brought a one-day experience to Los Angeles to kind of give you an idea of what the 10-day program is like. So they're going to have the 10-day program. This year, it will take place in up north. I'm super excited to apply. I don't know if I'll get chosen or not. You have to you have to, you know, be chosen. You have to go through a series of applications, but it was truly an honor to be part of the one day event that was here in LA. I gained so much from it. The space that Red Bull opened up was amazing. I just want to give a really special thank you to Ana from We All Grow and Paula Duran from Red Bull for always holding space for the brown girls. Like, I don't think they understand like what they do when they open spaces. And then I say that, and I have to say that while I was there, you know, here I go getting emotional. While I was there, I thought to myself how supported and how taken care of I felt and I could feel the intention behind every workshop. I could feel the intention behind every person that participated. I could feel how safe and sacred the space was. I feel so honored to be able to open up spaces for my listeners. And I only want to get better and better and better at doing that for you all, at creating events that are completely full of intention because they really do transform. I put so much intent behind everything I do. I hear from you all the benefits that you obtain from the exercises that we do in all of the events, but I never really get to be the receiver of that. I'm the giver of it. I'm opening up the space. So it was really nice to sit and just be completely taken care of and completely supported and to be taught all of this knowledge and tips and what can help me expand. I was placed in two workshops that were perfect for me. It was workshops that I attracted. One was called Financially Wise and the other one was called Building Your A-Team. For the Financially Wise workshop, I felt so aligned to it, first of all, because you guys know I'm in the thick of the abundance and prosperity chant right now. When I heard this woman speak on how money is energy, this is a woman that went to school for finance. She has her own company. She's doing it. She's not like a woohoo person that learned about abundance and money. Like, no, she went to school for money. Like, that's her jam. But to listen to her make the connections between the left brain and the right brain, between energy and the logistics of money was like, oh my gosh, I know how to do this. I'm just having trouble at looking at money like it's energy. I had that aha moment, but I still couldn't see money as energy. I just knew that that was where I was tripping up. And then come today, I'm doing the work and I received this incredible vision about how lavish and abundance my thoughts were and that I have so many thoughts and prosperous ideas and that this, this space, this third eye that can see all of the creativity, that is the money. The money is not in the bank and the money is not in green dollar bills. It is in my head, in my thoughts. As soon as that sunk in, the amount of ideas that were so easy and in my face for me to begin to bring prosperity at new levels in my life slapped me. They were sitting right in front of me. It reminded me of a story that I heard when Cortez was making his way in boats towards Mexico to conquer indigenous people where in the shoreline the boats were already there they were already coming and the indigenous people were not able to see the boats 
It was a shaman that began to notice ripples in the water and knew that something was coming. And as the shaman began to focus his vision into the water, he saw the boats. But the people couldn't see the boats because it was so out of this world that their mind couldn't put that together. And the moment that he began to explain, little by little, people began to see the boats coming. And then eventually everyone saw the boats and then they were here in person and conquering Mexico. It reminded me of that story of how simple something can be, but it takes a shift to be able to understand and be able and see. I am beginning to see the boats very far away. I still don't fully understand how the boat is constructed. I don't know what's inside. I don't know. I'm not fully aware, but I can comprehend that in the same way that I eat, I have to eat in order to live, and I have to discharge and expel my food. Basically, I have to take a shit. In that same law, of order, that is the same exact law that applies to receiving and giving money. So if we're not receiving it, that means we're also not giving it. And if you can only identify with giving and you can't identify with receiving, then you can't give. You feel me? When I began to make this discovery, there was a flow of not just money coming my way today, but there was a flow of ideas that were so easy to execute for me to continue and bring abundance. That's one of the things I feel like with abundance, with prosperity, with those thoughts, they're fleeting. They're fleeting. And so you kind of have to grab onto them. I almost feel like it's reaching towards fruit that's hanging from the tree. If I pick it too early, It might be too early and it's not ready for me to eat yet. I might have to set it somewhere and then I run the risk of missing when it's ripe and ready to be eaten. If I let it stay in the tree too long, it could go bad. Animals can get to it and eat it and then it's it's gone. So I feel like there's a perfect time when you're given the vision and you need to take the steps to pull your hand up, grab the fruit, give it a twist, give it a pull, and prepare it to be eaten, wash it, whatever the case may be. I'm hoping that whatever downloads I'm receiving, whatever vibration, whatever energy is coming to me, that in this moment, I'm able to share that energy with you. Before I go, I just want to give a really huge shout out to everybody that donated to Aliana's GoFundMe account. For those that don't know, I want to share this story with you really quickly because I really feel that this was also a part of me being able to receive abundance. All of last week's theme was to give. One of the intentions that I had set last week was that I wanted a cause to manifest itself so that I could be able to give or open a space of giving for one of our listeners. And as I was moving through ideas, I really couldn't find anything that spoke to me. And I thought, I hope this isn't a fleeting thought. I hope hope it's not like I don't leave the fruit hanging on the tree and let it go rotten. I really want something to come. And as I'm scrolling through my Instagram account, I see this letter that says, Dear Santa Claus, I really want a chain that is a cross like my sister's chain. And I want it gold. And I want a poem book. And I also want silly scent markers. That's written in a pink marker by a little eight-year-old girl. And then at the end, you can see where she came back with a black pen and said, Santa, I don't want presents, but I do want a wish. I want my dad to come back. Her father is incarcerated. Her mother is one of our tribe sisters. She hasn't seen her father in the last six months. He's in Missouri and her mother currently doesn't have the finances to get her daughter there. Spiritual Guerrera is her Instagram account. You all can check out the letter on our Instagram account at Let There Be Lose. When I saw that letter, it stopped me. I looked around and I was sitting with my family and it gave me a strong pain in my heart. It was like a punch to the gut. And I thought to myself, I have to do something. Immediately, I send 
spiritual guerrera a text. I've never met her before, but we started following each other about six years on Instagram. She's watched my entire journey. I've watched her entire journey. She's watched me go through ups and downs as I've watched her go through ups and downs. And I was like, let's find out how much it's going to take us to get Aliana there, who's going to go with her, how much a hotel is, everything. And I opened up a GoFundMe account and I knew that if I gave and if I opened up a space to give, then we could make this happen. I'm not able to give our goal, which was $1,500, but I can give a part and perhaps all of the listeners that our tribe can also give their part and we can make this happen. All Aliana wanted for Christmas was her dad. And I felt like this was achievable. It might have been overwhelming for Claudia to think, how am I going to make this happen? Maybe I can't make this happen right now. But Aliana was so brave and she had faith for her to go and ask for a Christmas wish. By the way, I've never even heard of a Christmas wish. For her to come up with the idea of like, I just want a Christmas wish. This is what I want. I was inspired by her bravery and I knew that the action I was taking had nothing to do with me and everything to do with Aliana's desire, Aliana's ability to think it first and trust that Santa would make this happen. So there were 53 Santas that made this happen And I'm going to take the time to say a very special thank you to everyone that stepped up and made this happen. I appreciate you. Vanessa Perez, Jess Resendiz, Cindy Cruz, Isabel Mangana, Erin Ramirez, Jennifer Rosales, Rosalba Rivas, Nancy Bailon, Francisca Gallardo, Alex Duenas, Linda Gonzalez, Trisha Unash. I might be butchering some of these names, guys. I'm sorry. Analilia Morales, Ana Carizales, Kelly Collier, Griselda Flores, Maria Medina, Angela Ayala, Joanna Molina, Johnny Mae Davis, Esther Munoz, Priscilla Vilman, Diana Perez, Jackie Mojica, Arlene Galindo, Yvette M., Angelina Quinteros, Jose Rodriguez, Lisa Vera, Noel Stapleton, Juliet Arenas, Leticia Castaño, Felicia Rincón, Cristina Atilano, Lucia Blia, Nicole Gonzalez, Cynthia Guzman Biem, Araceli Aguilar Cigarran, Angela Bautista, Yesenia Williams, Lizette Muñoz, Stella Fox, Isamar Dario, Desiree Schmidt, Frank Gonzalez, Patty Rodriguez, Sheila Garcia, Al Turner, Ray Romo, Griselda Jimenez, Fatima Luna, Vilma Duarte. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for giving. I know that Aliana's already given us so much in giving us permission to ask when we need to ask. And allowing for our thoughts to manifest themselves and know that we do not have to be in control of how the money manifests itself, but to know that there are Santas out there that will make shit happen. So for everyone that was a Santa, for Aliana, thank you. May the light within grow stronger.